thank you for listening to WRYAT, New Orleans' fifth-ranked public radio station. As always, we're broadcasting live from a prefabricated Home Depot shed located off of South Carrollton by the Popeyes. Boo, y'all. Welcome to a spooktacular Florida Lily Fashion Files with me, Lily. I'm your resident expert on all things fashion here in NOLA. I just want to start things off by saying I am so glad that it's finally fall, y'all. It's my favorite season in part because my favorite holiday is Halloween. And like most people here in NOLA, I love dressing up in costumes. What better reason to dress up than to honor St. Hollow's Eve himself, who I think had like a pumpkin head or something, if I remember my Bible correctly. So every year, Doug and I go to the Halloween brunch at the Sheraton, and we usually like to wear a couple's costume. So today, I'm going to share with y'all some of our favorites from the past, and maybe it'll give you that spark of inspiration for your couple's costume this year. Now, y'all know me. I love my Disney. Disney is a very important part of mine and Doug's relationship to me. So for Halloween, we often like to pay homage to some of our favorite Disney movies. Now, I know you see Disney couples costumes all the time. So what we do is something different. I like to mix it up because I'm not like all the other girls. I'm from the South. So, like, instead of dressing up as a Disney prince and princess, Doug and I will dress as other famous duos from Disney movies. For example, last year I was Tinkerbell, you know, the cute little sprite, and Doug was Peter Pan, you know, the boy whom will never grow old. So this costume is real easy for the ladies because all you really need to buy is some wings from the party store, and you can pretty much wear any green mini dress to be Tinkerbell. Now, for the guys, of course, you got to talk them into wearing a pair of tights, cut their hair, or wearing a wig, which, let me tell you, men do not like. Another important part of the look is that Peter looks young and fresh and boyish, so you got to put some makeup on your man, make his cheeks rosy, give him a little bit of a pink lip, and maybe a little bit of highlighting powder to make him look dewy fresh. Now, your man may complain about being done up like a little boy. He may even ask a question like, What, do you like little boys or something? But it's all in good fun, folks. Doug and I like to razz each other like that. Let me tell you, Doug has had a lot of experience getting into funny get-ups. The year before last, we actually went as Ariel, the Little Mermaid, and her fish friend, Flounder. You can do Mermaid Ariel. There are tutorials for that sort of thing, but I just decided make it easy on myself and I'll dress as Ariel as a human with legs. You know when she first washes up on the beach and she like wraps herself in a sail, I think? You just grab yourself a white bed sheet and a red wig and boom, you're Ariel with legs. For Doug, we got a yellow fish onesie and put blue straps on it. Now, this is a real uh, furry, a fuzzy onesie. You just step into it. You zip it up. It's got a hood that comes over your head. It's actually real cozy. Sometimes I make Doug wear it. I mean, uh, Doug will wear it. Like when it's cold outside and Doug doesn't want to mow the lawn and he's complaining. I tell him, go put on your flounder suit, honey. Of course, that Halloween, it was 85 degrees outside. But sometimes comfort is the price you got to pay for a good costume. And this was a good costume. I mean, he really looked like Flounder after we painted his whole face yellow. And I got a little crafty for the cheeks since Flounder has that round face. I spray painted a styrofoam ball yellow, cut it in half, and used some spirit gum to attach the styrofoam to Doug's cheeks. Of course, the night ended with Doug having an allergic reaction to the spirit gum and having to get an antihistamine shot at the urgent care. But before that, we had everyone staring at us. We were turning a lot of heads. Speaking of turning heads, this last costume idea is one of my favorites because I like to use Halloween as an occasion to dress up as someone who is glamorous and powerful and beautiful, like the Blue Fairy from Pinocchio. This one has that fun vintage feel since it's a classic movie from the 1900s. 
So for me, I acquired a nice blue sequin gown from one of my favorite vintage stores, Bicentennial Girl. And, you know, just did a real glam 1900s hairstyle and makeup style. I, of course, had wings and a wand left over from our wedding, so I used those. Doug was Pinocchio, of course, and we had to look around for clothes for grown men that fit Pinocchio's style. But that was actually the easy part. The real angle with Pinocchio is that he's a puppet boy. Not quite a person, but also not a thing. So what I really wanted people to understand was that Doug was puppet Pinocchio and not real boy Pinocchio. So I got real creative with the makeup on this one. First, I made Doug wax his legs and arms so I could draw the wooden joints on his knees and elbows to make him better resemble a puppet, which I was able to do with a couple of Sharpies so it would stay on all day and night. For the nose, I used modeling clay, and I kept some with me on my person while we were out so I could add to it if Doug lied. This way, we could realistically make his nose get bigger, like in the movie. I, for one, wish Doug would lie to me more in the bedroom. (laughs) Ah, Just kidding, Doug. We found another fun little twist putting this costume together. Pinocchio doesn't really have this in the movie, but I thought it was funny. We attached strings to the back of Doug's vest and tied him to a little puppet handle, and I kept hold of that, so every time I saw Doug talking to someone I didn't want him talking to, I just yanked him back to my side. Like I said, it's not realistic to the movie, but it's just a fun thing you can do to make your man's Pinocchio costume a little more interesting. So these are just fun Halloween costumes you can do together as a couple that are a little outside the box. I won't lie, they're a little more fun for the ladies, but even if your man complains, just know that deep down, he loves it, and he knows it's good for him. Because when you have a happy wife, you have a happy life. Happy Halloween, y'all. Halloween has come. And here at the WRYAT studio, we are most definitely celebrating. I have set up a safe yet spooky section of the parking lot this year for our neighbors to stop by and say hi. I even carved a pumpkin. I decided to carve just the intro to the spookiest song I know. Cold Sore in the Fall by the Violet Fams. Now, I just carved the intro to this song because I want our visitors to be a little scared, but not completely scared. Still, they need to come up and get some candy. If you're not familiar with the song, this is how it goes. Oh, wait. Look, there's somebody. We must we have a visitor now. Merry Scary Halloween. Well, aren't you lifeless? Trick or treat. I'm a ghost. Ooh, that's super scary. A kid ghost. I can tell it's a kid ghost because of the size. And also the sheet used has like alphabet and numbers all over it. I said trick or treat, mister. That you did. And here is a very special Halloween treat. No trick. Here you go. A pair of normal panties that were sent flying through the crowd of the Sound Pound stage 20 years ago. This very night where the spooktacular Halloween show it was. Doctor's assistant Joanna and the night triages. Yeah, gross. You look like a dog. Dad, let's go. Um, kid ghost, I did not finish telling you about... I better go and get that. All right, listeners, be really quiet. I need to hear who's on the line. Hello, this is WRYAT Studios. This is Luke. What's the scoop? Hello? Hello? I said, this is Luke. What's your scoop? Okay, well, if it's important, please call back. See, I must go back to the street and hand out some treats. 
Oh no, listeners, I will do my best to keep my wits about me. But to be honest, this is a Halloween massacre in our parking lot. All of our ghoulishly good gifts have been destroyed. I, I'm a thermos. It rained, rain gauge. It is completely destroyed. I picked this up at Parents' Day at the Adorable Zoo in 1996. That was a good year. Our St. Charles Mansion family cutlery set, it's ruined. I had to stay at that Airbnb 13 times to get this full cutlery set. And our Fat City Domino set, well, it took flight. Look, our I, I beefy wee-wee sign ribs bib is still here, but they took the high chair. Hey, kids, with the toilet paper, did you see who did this? <laughs> <laughs> trick or trick, wolf, dude. Yeah, you're bad at this, just like your day job. Good point. Please quit your day job. <laughs> okay. That's enough, okay, kids? Uh, you could have just insulted me. You didn't have to trash all this memorable, memorable, memorable items. Uh, get him! Get him! Get that guy, man! Get him! Just grab him! Get grab him, him real get hard! Him. Get him! Grab him! Her. <laughs> get that adult man! Is okay. Wolf Dude gonna cry? You need your mommy. Really give him his mommy. Wrap him up in teepee. All right, well, y'all be safe, okay? I'm okay, listeners. This is Loop. I'm not going to cry, but I, I do look like somebody's mommy because of all the this toilet tissue issue. So uh, this unwelcome um trick has also been a treat because here at the WRYAC studios we are in need of toiletries so ta-da a Halloween miracle hey did you give my kid these used panties that's the shaggy dog man dad yes yes I did but I did not finish telling the whole backstory. Now, you see, those never made it all the way to the stage. And now it's the responsibility of this child. You see, this small little child, this baby, this baby child's got to take it back to the stage. Would you shut up, man? My child is six. Do you honestly think no matter how stupendous the show was that a child should receive a pair of used drawers? What a complete... Nimrod. Exactamundo, champ. Let's go home. Well, everybody, it seems like I can take down this spooky station and call it a night now. I'm just going to have to wait for next year, I guess, though. So, uh, we will now just continue our W-R-Y-A-T Halloween tradition of playing Board Gus in the Bragnificent self-titled intro to the House of Clout for six hours and 66 minutes. Till next time, everybody. How We now pause this programming for station identification and remind you that you are tuned in to WRYAT New Orleans Guerrilla Radio. Learn more about our programming online at WRYATradio.com and follow us on Instagram at WRYAT Radio. As always, you can listen to this and previous radio broadcasts on Spotify or anywhere else you download or stream podcasts. Thank you for tuning in to WRYAT New Orleans Guerrilla Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting edition of Boat Talk. I'm Ronnie D'Amico. I'm Donnie D'Amico. And this is Boat Talk, where we talk about boats. Yeah, that's pretty much been it for a while now, so uh, let's go ahead and take that caller. All right, first caller. Uh, I am soon buying beautiful American boat, but am unhappy about having to pay uh, terrible American boat taxes. What recommendation do you have to avoid such uh, situation? Good question there, Carl. So taxes, I know a thing or two about taxes. I just served some time for tax evasion. So before you even buy any kind of a boat, you want to make sure you get all them documents together. Hey, Ronnie, why don't you, uh, can, can we just like, 
Hold on a second here. I'm a little preoccupied. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to be the one. Okay. You notice the uh, gargoyle that's appeared on the top of our house about a uh, oh, about a week ago? At least that's when I started seeing him. What do you mean gargoyle? Like one of those like things at the, uh, the churches? Yeah, I mean like a gargoyle. Yeah, like one of those things at the churches. Usually they take on some demonic, cryptid, humanoid form and... They you you know they they're actually like a maintenance device. They're supposed to reroute like rainwater away, but we already have a gutter system. So, I mean, I'm very confused as to why a gargoyle would appear on our house unless there's something we're not um atoning for. Hold on, Roddy. You mean gargoyles like those uh, Gothic uh, European like devices that are found in most of the cathedrals and churches that even have uh, found their way into American culture? That even the the Cathedral of America has their own version of these gargoyle creatures that are depict terrifying features like the end of the world or Darth Vader. Yes, these are the gargoyles to which I'm referring. One appears to have manifested on our roof, and I have taken to praying to it because I want it to go away. Hold on. We're talking about the same gargoyles that in the early 90s, there was a cartoon depiction of the gargoyles that got transported from the Scotland region on top of castles and then terrified New Yorkers with a cop. And it also had half the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation. No, you're referring to gargoyles the cartoon. I'm referring to gargoyles the gargoyles. One appears to have manifested on top of our house. And you're not misspeaking here there, Donnie, and talking about a cat who hates Mondays, likes lasagna, which is not good for cats, and had a very sad owner. Well, Ronnie, you would be referring to either Heathcliff or Garfield, two notorious orange tubby tabbies from newspaper comic folklore. I am referring to gargoyles from mythic folklore, often French or of the Renaissance era, I want to say. Could be completely... No, Gothic. You said Gothic. Yeah. Oh, I apologize, Ronnie. Anyway, I'm praying to the goddamn gargoyle because it told me... It came to me in my dreams and told me all of the souls. Get me the souls. How many souls can you get me, Donnie? And I was like, gee, I don't know, man. I don't know. I really only live with Ronnie and we can't see too many other people right now. Not just because of the whole situation, but like we're totally on house arrest after our stints in prison this year. Hold on, wait. Are we still talking about the kind of gargoyles that were in that like anthology series, Tales from the Dark Side, where that one guy met an actual gargoyle, it spared his life, and then he ended up marrying it and having children. But the deal with the gargoyle was is that he couldn't talk about gargoyles, and he broke the first rule of gargoyle club and told his gargoyle wife about gargoyles, and then she turned into a gargoyle, flew up with him, and they both turned to stone, and him just a sad guy, her crying, and their baby gargoyle. Yeah, you seen him? Yeah, 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 he's real nice. He owes me 20 bucks. Why did you give... Why did why did you give the gargoyle twenty bucks, Ronnie? I just he like was super nice. He was like you know scaring away the cats. Is he coming to you for money and he's coming to me for souls? Because that doesn't seem like a fair trade off. I mean, what's the exchange? Why don't you ever get haunted? I can't close my eyes. I can't close my eyes without seeing the gargoyle's eyes staring back into my closed eyes. Then I hear this like Gregorian chanting, which doesn't necessarily even seem like culturally related. But like, it's there. It's there, Ronnie. It's Donnie. Listen, it's people skills there, pal. You just don't have the right kind of people skills. All right. This gargoyles like people like gargoyle skills. I mean, how are you so cool with the guy? Do you know why this Ronnie? Are you the reason why this gargoyle's here? Listen, pal, I, I just, I think this country needs to go back to just better value system and like being kind to a fellow man, woman, and in a uh, half man, half beast thing. So, I, yeah, I, I allowed the gargoyle to come on our, 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 our at roof just to exchange for like, you know, he throws me a couple of dollars here and there and he eats, he eats stray mice. Yeah, and now I gotta go get him souls. So undo my freaking ankle bracelet because I wanna get him out of here as soon as possible. And the sooner I can get souls, the better. All right, all right, I'm really sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta get, get this uh, thing off of uh, Donnie's ankle. We got like 30 minutes before that starts beeping. Uh, yeah, yeah, so this is Ronnie D'Amico with Car Talk. This is Donnie D'Amico, it's boat talk, and I guess I'm gonna go get some friggin' souls for the gargoyle that Ronnie's letting stay at our house. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you on the water. Yeah, see you in the water. Get that thing! Ow!
What up, all my juggalos and juggalettes? Whoop, whoop. Out there in the dirty heart of the dark carnival, my home and yours. That's right, I'm talking about the city. It's your boy, DJ Two Scoops, and I'm coming at you, as always, from a low rider on St. Claude. And I'm here just in time for our favorite holiday when the sky gets dark, when the night comes early, when all the stars align into one big giant cosmic fago bottle over shangri-la that's right i'm talking about all hallows eve and just to let all of you out there know that your boy dj two scoops from juggalo's ice cream shop and fago floats do you for two scoops did not forget where he came from i want to take my time this year to give back growing up a wee little murder clown in my neighborhood i can easily remember how awkward it was to go knock on your neighbor's door and ask for candy when just hours earlier that day you had been planting a bunch of chicken heads in their garden. So this year, your boy has purchased himself an evil party bus. That's right. The boogie woogie woo party bus for you. And for the low, low fare of $75 American cash money in my hand, I'll come to your house and I'll pick up your little juggalo or juggalette. Whoop, whoop. And I will drive them to trick-or-treat in all of the nicest neighborhoods in the city. Neighborhoods that maybe are not as familiar with their dirty clown past deeds. Whoop, whoop. So if you want to go chicken hunting in the Treme, or offer up some blood offerings to the great Malenko and the Marini, or maybe you want to put a two-lead in your butt cheeks in Algiers, hit up your boy DJ Two Scoops and hop on the Boogie Woogie Woo party bus for you. And let's go get some rich people's candy. So remember, hit up your boy DJ Two Scoops for the best party bus in the city and the only Boogie Woogie Woo party bus for you. And as always, you can find me on a low rider on St. Claude. Whoop, whoop. There's more to our world than what we see. There's a world beyond. And two ghost hunters recently graduated from Tulane University are here to find those that lie in the unearthly realm. Those that have transcended their mortal coils and then trash talk the hell out of them. This is Ghost Roast. What's up, folks? This is Chad, the Ghost Hunter. And I'm Zach, the Ghost Hunter. And tonight, we're totes going to make contact with the spirit realm. That's right, bro. We're all set to conjure up the dead tonight, because uh, my dad got us a room at the most haunted place in New Orleans, the Hotel Monteleon. Oh, your dad is so clutch, dude. Hell yeah, he is. And as a graduation present, he also got us some killer ghost hunting equipment. We've got a digital recorder for capturing electronic voice phenomena, or EVP. EVP, right on. We've got an electromagnetic field detector so I can get the EMFs off any spooks that are looking to chill with us. So sweet. And I've got three variety packs of smearing off ice, bro. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude, your dad is the best. I'm so blessed, bro. So, yeah, we've got all this sweet gear from Mr. Hansen, and everything's plugged in and turned on. We're all set up to start doing our thing. Now, for those out there at home, some like to communicate with the afterlife via Ouija board or by asking questions to help them resolve past trauma. But Zach and I, we've got our own way of getting the ghosties' attention. We bag on their mom, dude. Or more specifically, we roast them, like on Comedy Central's roast of Bruce Willis. But enough of that. It's time to get down to business. Chad, you're from New Orleans, so you know who died around here. Who should we roast first? Well, Zach, as any good born and bred citizen of Old Metairie knows, you can't talk to the supernatural without talking to the voodoo queen of New Orleans, Marie Laveau. So let's start with her. I'm down, dude. Marie Laveau, I summon you, Marie Laveau, appear before us so I can tell you, 19th century voodoo is just multi-level marketing with chicken bones. Oh, you're telling me you can sell me a love potion you made with clover and ginger? 
Nah, I'm just gonna chug some essential oils because jack shit will still happen, but at least my throat will smell like lavender afterwards. Oh, Marie Laveau! I don't care about your juju or your gree gree because that's all dumb dumb. Hey, join in, dude. Don't make me carry the load all this on my own. Bruh, I don't know anything about her. I don't know who Marie Laveau is. It's easy, dude. She's a voodoo queen. Watch. Hey, Marie Laveau, I bet you smell after killing all them chickens all the time. I don't want to stab your voodoo doll. I want to give it a bath. Ha! See, man? Try it out. Uh, hey, Marie Laveau, uh, queen of voodoo? More like queen of who you, because I don't know who you are. Oh, bro, y- you can do better than that, bro. I- <laughs> Hey, Marie Laveau, uh, you should put a spell on me to make me care about who the hell you are. Uh, okay, this isn't going to work. Yeah, I, I have trouble ragging on someone unless I know a lot about him, man. All right, bro. Well, let, let's just try someone else. You know Louis Armstrong, right? Uh, that's the guy who sang the song that closed out that old Family Matters show, right? Yeah, right on. Yeah, I, I could do that. I could do that. All right, cool, bro. Go for it. Hey, Louie, it's a wonderful world. You're dead. Yeah, that's it, bro. Keep going. Hey, Louie, you say hello, Dolly, but your face makes her want to say goodbye. <laughs> Louie, you don't scat. You just sound like scat. It's appropriate you died of a heart attack because your voice sounds like a heart attack feels. You must like being dead because it's so much cooler than jazz. You should improvise not being lame and leave the trumpet playing to Dizzy Gillespie. Your dad should have pretended he had a trombone and pulled out. Hold on, dude. Hold on. Hold on. I just looked it up on Wikipedia, and it looks like Louis actually died in New York. Man, I don't think we're going to be able to get his ghost all the way over here, my man. Ah, well... I mean, we were doing so well, you know? Well, who could we do that, that died here? Oh, man. The lead singer of Blind Melon OD'd outside the House of Blues. Nah, I don't want to talk about old people music anymore. Okay, well, uh, how about the cocaine king, Al Copeland? Who? Oh, you know, the guy who made Popeyes? He also opened that cheesecake bistro in St. Charles that your dad liked to take us to. Ah, uh, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, yeah, let's roast him. So, Al, how do you like your roast? Spicy or original recipe? No, bro. Original recipe is KFC, dude. Unless you're talking about cocaine, in which case Al Copeland's old ass needed it mild. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Popeye's chicken tastes like it was flavored by someone who snorts. Hey, Al, why doesn't Popeye serve spinach? Couldn't figure out a cook it, you food hack? Oh, and your biscuits are drier than the tissues that were served at your funeral. Yeah, dude. And with all them facelifts, Al, you look like your fried chicken tasted. Hell, everything in your life was like your chicken. Unnecessarily overdone. Chad, are you sure this guy was even famous? I feel like he was just the hype man for type 2 diabetes. Well, Zach, he may not have been world famous, but he is metery famous. You know, along with Big Lee and George Rodriguez, Blue Dog, and leaving New Orleans to get to the airport. Hey, Copeland! Do they let you show your tacky boats along the service road to hell? Hell, I bet they let you put up Christmas lights in hell because even when you're celebrating Jesus' birth, your tacky ass is still an affront to God. Uh, hey, bro. I don't know what you're talking about, but it looks like it's working. This EMF meter is going crazy. Oh, wow. Do you think it's here? Hey, Al, are you here? Stop messing with my afterlife. Oh, whoa, it's former Sheriff Harry Lee. Who? He was the most popular sheriff in Jefferson Parish's history. You don't know who Harry Lee is? I, no, I don't know Dade County's most popular comptroller either. You two boys need to shut up. You're disturbing the peace for me and my fellow ghosts. What are you gonna do, old man? You're just a bag of ectoplasm. Now that I'm dead, I control the spirits of all the nutria I killed in life. So you believe me when I say you don't want to push me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lee. We'll quiet down. Please go about your business. Great. Now, if you excuse me, I have to resume my game of canasta with Ruthie, the duck lady, and Dr. John. 
dude, what, what the hell? We, we just saw a real ghost and you want to stop? Oh man, I don't want to stop my man, but we like need a plan. Let's chug these smeared off ices and come up with something. Will Zach and Chad be able to rag on more dead celebrities without being stopped by Sheriff Harry Lee? Find out next episode of Ghost Road. This is WRYAT New Orleans Guerrilla Radio. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.